Okay, welcome to the StreamZ community call of 11th August. The recording is on. The link to the meeting minutes, if anyone wants, should be in the chat. And as usually, the first point on the agenda is open forum. If anyone has any questions and issues which are not on the agenda, does anyone have anything? Okay, sounds like not. So we can remove it. Uh, are there any PRs or issues or proposals which anyone wants to discuss? Okay, so I guess that brings us at least faster to the to the special topics. So the first one is already something we discussed last time, but we wanted to get back to it. And that's the supported Kubernetes versions. So for those who are not aware of it, uh, today we support Kubernetes 116 plus. And it's probably time to move to some newer versions. The 0.25 will be released soon. It has already the first release candidate. So I guess the question is, when are we going to drop some of the older versions? And which versions will we drop? I think there are in general two options. One is to support 119 and newer. So that means dropping 116, 117, and 118. And that would allow us to use only the events v1 and ingress v1 APIs. So we will be able to kind of uh, improve the code by removing the things around. Uh, v1 beta 1 versions of these APIs. And the other option would be 121, which uh, introduced the pod disruption budgets version 1. So that would allow us to drop the v1 beta 1 versions of both events and ingress, but also pod disruption budgets. So any opinions? Um, maybe just a question. Is there a specific reason that um, you didn't like keep a cycle of updating the minimal Kubernetes version? Sometimes it, you mean, why don't we update it like every time new Kubernetes version is released, for example? Like I mean, I'm just I'm just wondering, like, if there are specific requirements from StreamZ that got you stopping at one sixteen and not advancing beyond that, or that's just like the focus was not on that topic lately. There are always users who will use some old versions. There are users who still use Kubernetes one eleven today, so. The question is more, what do you get from advancing? What do the users get out of it and so on? So let's say for a long time, there was no real reason why to not support Kubernetes 1.16. Now that will be 10 versions back and there are some options how to simplify the code by moving to the newer version. So I guess it's about it. where yeah. can you okay. see, the, see the value. Yeah. So you're keeping up with the with most of the latest, but the minimum you try to have a reason to advance and instead of just like yeah, 
Exactly. Okay. Instead of kind of saying every four months when there's new Kubernetes release, let's drop the oldest release. We try to more do it based on some reasoning, based on some effort, based on some API changes and so on. Okay. Thank you. From my point of view, Kubernetes 121 is already reasonably old. You know, it's already a year and a, coming up on a year and a half old. So all things being equal, I would choose to, to jump to 121 just to avoid the another step of moving to that sooner. Just my gut feel. Yeah, I was about to say on the survey if you if we were going to say it was one twenty one plus that we were going to support, then um, you're looking at what's that? Thirty five percent of the people that replied to the survey were using a version that we would then no longer support, which seems like that's quite a large proportion. Doesn't up add up to one hundred. Yeah, so I think it's, uh, yeah, it's like these users are using these versions on some clusters. They might be also using the newer versions on other clusters. Mm -hmm. I think doing one version, like going 119 now and 121 later, I don't think that necessarily adds additional effort because the places where we will change the code they are fairly well separated like if we move to 119 now then we can remove the parts of the code not needed there and then if we decide to move to 121 i don't know november then we can remove the pod disruption budget related part I don't think that necessarily creates more effort to do it in two steps than to do it in one step. Okay, that seems reasonable. I wonder if those people who are using old Kubernetes versions are all keeping up to date regularly with Strimzy versions. That's certainly a fair point. I suppose in a lot of cases, maybe the people who are managing Strimzy might not have the control over keeping Kubernetes up to date, but might like to keep their Strimzy up to date and get the latest features there as well. Yeah, it's quite common that it's separate teams handling the platform and Strimzy. So yeah, I'm afraid we don't have any, any linkage to to what versions are these actually running? I think we had some questions about the versions, but they you do not have the link between those two questions. Yeah, we didn't ask about specific Strimzy versions. We just asked about people's sort of posture to how they upgrade or when they upgrade rather. Yeah, yeah but even if, even, if, even if we did ask, it would not be obvious whether it's yeah yeah we still wouldn't have guys the, the correlation the old version yeah. or these guys and so on yeah so, so I'm, we go... I'm plus one on 119 plus for now and then in some number of months going to 121 plus that seems quite reasonable to me Thing I'm wondering is well, how we want to communicate that to the users. Like, if we say, "Oh, we, we really want to move to one twenty-one uh, in six months," should we tell users now that uh, you know one twenty-one is like deprecated, or or rather that one nineteen, one twenty are not deprecated, and like give them a heads up that this is going to happen? Well. 
we can give them some expected date when we might remove that. But I don't think 119 and 120 are supported by Kubernetes anymore. You don't get CV fixes, you don't get patch releases anymore and so on. So, so yeah, I'm not sure deprecating them. Yeah, I'm not sure if the users still use them, whether they actually care that much. Yeah, but here it means from the next streams they release, this will, will not work anymore if you're using this community. So here you could make a choice. So either you do your Kubernetes or that's the last stream version you Yeah, so so I think that's the other thing we need to decide. If we decide that it's 0 019, what we want to do now, I guess the question is whether we want to do it now or whether we want to do it in the next release, which, uh, yeah, I think that's maybe what we can do is that the streams is 031 will still support 016 plus, but in the release notes there, we can warn the users that from streams is 032 up, we will support only 119 plus so that they have some time to prepare for it. That's how yeah. we did it in the, in the previous times when we were changing the supported versions. Yeah, I think that's, it gives people some notice, even if it's not necessarily an awful lot of notice. I think that's sufficient. Yeah, it's just like it's the direction of the project you see this is what's going to happen. I think that's important. So if you want to give them some rough timing on the 021, what would that be? Would it be, I don't know, January, for example, or in six months, or? Do we have to give a date, or do you have to just give the, the N plus one version and uh, refer to the release? Um, plan I or... wouldn't give them an exact date, and I wouldn't give them a version. I would just say something like, yeah, I don't know. We will revisit the supported versions in six months time. And we expect that then we might drop support for 119 and 120, for example. Yeah, I think some sort of vague wording that doesn't commit us to anything, but that does suggest that if you're gonna upgrade, then do everyone a favor and upgrade to a much more current version. I'm afraid of vague statement, basically they just don't cause decisions or actions. <laughs> like at some point in the future, this could change, but. Yeah, but it will become a firmer statement before it gets removed. I mean, I hear what you're saying, but you know, I. I just think we're not in a position right now to sort of say anything concrete. So either we say nothing at all, which then doesn't give anyone any notice about that, or we just say, look, we do anticipate it, but we're not saying exactly when. Fair enough. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so we can, I think we can say something like, that it will be reevaluated again in six months or something like that. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's fine with me. Okay. You mean uh, 32 will be removed in 032? Yeah. yeah, sorry. That's typo. Thanks for noticing. Anyone, anything else to the supported Kubernetes versions? Are there tests on different, on the different supported versions? 
or that's not like there is no matrix testing for that. Like, will we this change affect? Do not have. Like we do not have resources to run all the testing on each version. So we usually do testing on the oldest version and testing on the newest version. And then on the other versions, there's some ad hoc testing and so on. All right, so probably like effectively, this just means switch the test to run on the minimum version to run 119 instead of 116. Yeah, basically the, the immediate change on the in the tests is that they are on in the in the Azure pipelines, they are, for example, today running with 116 and that will be changed to 119. All right. And 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 then later on, are, I understand from your earlier statements that probably there are plans to refactor parts of the code once you upgrade that. Yeah. So we will remove the the parts of the code which use the old APIs. So yeah, like the code which works with the ingress or with the events that has often kind of if else switches that uh, if we are on Kubernetes 116, let's use uh, ingress v1 beta one. Uh, if we yeah. are on 120, let's use ingress v1 and things like that. So so some of these we will be able to basically clean them and the related uh, tests and uh, simplify a bit, a bit the code base thanks to that. Okay, thank you. Right, anything else, anyone? If not, then I guess the next point is around the Kafka exporter, which is what we use for the consumer like monitoring and Yes, yeah, as, as I raised it in one of the previous calls, uh, there's no new release for some time and there are some CVEs related uh, to that. So I think we need to think a bit around how we want to proceed around it. Whether we want to look for some other tools for it or whether we want to try to have our own build where we can do our own releases which fix the CVEs and so on. I have a, an open pull request on dash dash I believe fixes the CV. Um, it's been open for a couple of weeks. There hasn't been any activity on it, but I could ping the maintainer to see if we get any response there. Yeah, I think that would be that would be great. And if not, I guess the simplest thing to do if we've got a fix would be to build it ourselves and use our own binaries, binary, I guess, um, for that. 
which might not be a, you know the, what we want to do in the the long term, but would certainly uh, allow us to move forward with the CVE fixes. Yeah, I guess that would be one of the options. Can I just ask the background? Is it that there are no active maintainers on that project anymore? Do we know? We had this issue already in the past and uh, the author of the project does not work on it full time and I guess he doesn't have time for it. So yeah, it's not like we're particularly eager to fork it or anything. Um, yeah. We'd prefer that, you know, um, that we didn't have to, but I think we have to be prepared to uh, if we're not able to fix issues and CVEs, then, you know, we end up doing stream easy use as a disservice by sticking with it. Course, yeah. I think uh, Paolo was the one who talked with the guy last time. Should we ask him if he can ping him again? Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of like the polite thing to do is to say, look, you know, we'd really like this if you're able to. We'd really appreciate it. But if you're not, then... You know, we understand. So, Tom, when you say there that um, ideally we wouldn't need to fork it, um, and it's not something that we would like to do, if we um, is the reason, but is the reason that we don't want to fork it uh, related to? it's an extra thing to maintain or is it that we we would not want to fragment um that project yeah more the fragmentation both. thing it's just you know obviously we've we've got some value out of kafka exporter um and you know i'm sure other people have as well and if we sort of go forking it then um yeah we don't We'd rather sort of keep what community might exist around it together rather than doing something which is going to sort of uh, dilute things. Yeah, the, re the reason I was asking is I was wondering if, so if the current maintainer is the sole maintainer and he, and if it turns out that he doesn't have any interest in maintaining it anymore, I wonder if it I don't know if this would fit at all, but if if the Strimsy project, for example, adopted it, so it it could be it could be done in a way that it's moved and that redirects or yeah. work and everything like that. So I, I think we I think when Paolo um, contacted the maintainer last time, he sort of made that sort of offer. Um, so obviously we can make that offer again, um, and you know. Ultimately, it's up to the maintainer, isn't it? And based on their response or non-response, we'll end up having to come to a decision in a few weeks' time. But I think there are. I think both things are, in a way, an issue. We do not want to fork the community, but. To be honest, we also need to think whether we have the resources to fork it or to move it under Streamsy, because 
yeah, if we just fork it for our own purposes to fix the CVE, then yeah, we need to build the build at least the CI or something to be able to kind of rebuild it with the fixed CVEs and do the release. If you would fork it completely, then I guess we would not want to end up in the same state where it is today that we don't have time to go through the PRs open there by various people and so on. So in a way it's a commitment to something what requires resources. So I think we would need to think about this as well, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Just a, it was just a passing thought and I didn't, I hadn't realized that um, Paolo had brought that possibility up in the past as well. No, I mean, it was, it, it's the right idea, right? It's just, uh, it's just that it has these aspects as well around actually having people to work on it ourselves. Yeah, I mean, there aren't any great options. But I think we've got a decision there to at least send an email and I think this will come back on the agenda next time or possibly the time after that. Yeah. Let's remove Paula's email from here. Probably still shows here, right? Google Docs mysteries. Okay, anything else we want to touch around the Kafka exporter? Okay, then the next point is around the survey. Tom, I know you got the, the text answers from the survey. I wondered in which format we might want to go through them. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've copied and pasted that. It's just in a CSV, so it's not the easiest thing to look at in that form. Um, I copied and pasted them and did a brief analysis in a Google Doc. Um, but it might be a company Google Doc that I can't share externally, in which case yeah, I, I can. I wondered if we, for example, might want to dedicate the next community call to it. And yeah, I've not got a problem with that maybe kind of put it on a on a slack at least or maybe on twitter as well that we will be discussing those answers and the survey on the on the call and that if someone wants to kind of add some more light on the answers or kind of hear to it that they might want to join and and go through it with us yeah, that's not a bad idea, actually. Some of them were um, a bit vague. Um, so, yeah, if anyone would want to sort of come along and just sort of uh, have a conversation about that, then that would be great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think some of those are quite clear. But like, I don't yes. know, the, the first response, external authentication and authorization integration would be, for example, good to understand if there's something what's missing in the OAuth authorization which we have, or if they would want something more, or what exactly they mean if there are some limitations. I mean, it's very unlikely that for every question we will get someone to answer. But if we go through them, then maybe some of the people join. It also gives us kind of a recorded answer to each of those. Yeah, and some of them might end up being requirements that we're not otherwise aware of. 
Yeah. So it would be worthwhile doing, definitely. So do we want to try to dedicate the next one, next call for it? That's the early one. Yeah, we don't know with where the respondents have come from, unfortunately. Otherwise, we could have made a better call about whether it would be more APAC or more North America friendly. Yeah, you know what? It's anyway recorded. So maybe we can simply take the... Uh, did you make any progress? You wanted to write a blog about the result? I've written a draft, but it's not quite ready to push yet. Do you think it's likely to be ready before the call in two weeks or the one in four weeks? It's not. It's. It could be ready before two weeks, but probably four weeks might be so, a little bit more realistic. So what if we give it the four weeks and use that as an invitation as well? Yeah. And then... It's the late one, but I think we can kind of go through it. The meeting is recorded. So yeah, even people who didn't made it there can listen to the discussion. And if they have something more specific about it, we can kind of invite them to join the one in, in two weeks and reopen the discussion for those points. Sure. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. Like this, I guess I will hopefully remember what I meant with it in a few weeks. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, anyone, anything else to the survey? If not, then we are at the end of the agenda. Uh, anyone has any other business, any other topics they want to raise? Going once, going twice. And I don't know how's the third one. Thrice. <laughs> yeah, thrice is the word. <laughs> okay so i guess that's it for today okay and well thanks folks thanks for joining everyone and Thank you. thanks a lot for discussions thanks bye, bye, now. Thanks. bye. bye. bye.